Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bouncing Back with Brighton. In today's episode, we're going to review everything that's happened in January, transfers and fixtures. We've played through them all and then we're going to play at West Ham in the Premier League. So just to start us off, was the first game against Manchester United. We've had an absolutely fantastic set of run of results in January. We won this one 2-1. It was a pretty close game. If anything, Manchester United had the better of the opportunities. But we managed to take two, David Ibrahim and an own goal quite late on to give us the three points. Next up was Arsenal in the FA Cup third round. Obviously, we played quite a rotated side, but we still managed to comfortably win 3-0. Dries Courtney with two and Innsfran with one. Next up was Manchester United again in the first leg of our League Cup semi-final. Again, another rotated side and we won this one 4-1. Veerman with a goal, Aguiar with a goal and Ibrahim with two. Anthony Martial for Manchester United. After that, we played Tottenham Hotspur at home in the Premier League and another comfortable win. Aguiar, Ibrahim and Yaros with the goals. The worst result of them all, hands down, was away from home against Swansea City. We drew this one 0-0. We didn't create enough. Our players didn't play particularly well. And unfortunately, it was the only time we dropped points in January. The second leg of the League Cup semi-final followed that against Man United. And again, we won 2-1, winning 6-2 on aggregate Darius Courtney with both goals. Next up was FA Cup time, fourth round against Watford. We managed to scrape through this one 3-2. Darius Courtney, Innsfran and Veerman with the goals for us. They scored like two goals and four minutes to bring the game level again. Uh, thankfully, Veerman got the third goal and gave us the win. And finally, the last game of the January period was at home against Wolves and we absolutely smashed them 6-0. Aguiar, Yaros, Bert Jacobs, David Ibrahim and our new signing got the goals. So there wasn't a lot of incomings and outgoings in the January transfer period, but there was a major signing, which we'll talk about just now. A lot of loans went out in terms of younger players and things like that. The only major player who left the club was Benoit Badia-Shale. The reason we've sold or loaned him to FC Bayern was because of the new signing. He's joined them for 250 grand a month until the summer. There is no agreed fee or anything, so he will be returning back to the club. But I will be looking to sell him during the summer. I would have looked to do it in the January period, but it, there just wasn't really that much interest in Baddy Shale. So he's going to get long game time, hopefully at FC Bayern. I believe he's on a first team at a regular basis. Uh, where is that? Yes, he is classed as a first team player for Bayern Munich, so he should hopefully have some good performances in Germany and be able to increase his transfer value for us to be able to sell in the summer transfer window. In terms of incomings for us, the first one was Mauricio Lamas from uh, Universidad de Chile. And yeah, he's a youngster. He's probably not going to make it in the first team squad, but we brought him in for £1 million. He's sitting in our under-23s probably till the summer where we'll look to loan him out. He's got the four-star potential. Hopefully he can grow and make us some tidy profit. The main signing was Juan Diego Bueno Prieto, £48.5 million from Villarreal. Now he's an absolutely superb 20-year-old centre-back. He does have some glaring problems though. Jump and reach and strength are both things that were training on his individual training. So hopefully we'll be able to see that improve uh, quite rapidly, I hope. But he has come in. He is, I think he might probably be a starter. Uh, his composure is a little bit low as well that's something that will hopefully come with time but his mentals compared to some of our other centre backs are really really strong his aggression anticipation bravery concentration decisions and positioning is all massive uh, compared to some of our other central defenders so in terms of our centre half we've obviously got Mark Yulich who is first choice hands down he will be the first name on the team sheet but then at the second centre back spot sort of up for grabs we've got Nathan Wood who's probably the one who's definitely going to miss out. He's basically in the squad because he's English and he's fast. So he's probably our fourth choice centre-back right now. But then it is a toss-up between uh, Juan Diogo Pietro, Prieto and Luis Gonçalves, the Portuguese centre-half. The reason why Prieto is probably going to be my preferred option is because Gonçalves is now reaching his potential ability. It's unlikely that he's going to improve dramatically from this point. So given the game time to Prieto to be able to improve is something that you prob I'm, he's probably going to be my second choice centre-back. So in terms of the competition screen, this is how the Premier League table looks after them uh, run of fixtures in January. We are six points clear from Swansea City in second um, with a game in hand as well. It looks like we're going to end up running away with this league. No jinx, hopefully we'll run away with this league. But um, it's some interesting teams up there, the likes of Watford and obviously Swansea uh, disrupting the top six a little bit, which is nice to see. Into, uh, in the next episode, we're obviously going to be playing Porto in our Champions League first knockout round. So that will be the next episode. 
We're into the fifth round of the FA Cup against Redden, and we're into the final of the League Cup against Newcastle. But all of that leads us to today, where we will be playing West Ham in the Premier League. In terms of the starting lineup, I'm not too sure. A lot of our boys have been getting quite a bit of rest actually during the January transfer period because we've had that many cup games a lot of our second string has been playing quite a lot so uh, everyone's pretty well rested so I think this is how we're going to line up Antonio Carlos in goal uh, Valentin, Prieto, Jolic and Coret in the defence Ben Ebb and Aquino in the centre of the park uh, Sebastian Yaros on the right Paulinho on the left and Graham Birch in behind David Ibrahim so West Ham come out with a 4 triple 2 Pretty defensive, two defensive midfielders. We're going to have to probably be pretty wary about co uh, counter attacks, uh, but hopefully, we've got the quality to be able to beat them today. So, we've kicked off against West Ham a few minutes in now. Um, obviously, getting the winter deal will be massive, but if we don't, it's not the end of the world. Would like to keep the run going in the Premier League, though. We did draw. Um, it was against Swansea, wasn't it, in the January? The second, so it's not as bad of a result as I initially thought. I didn't even realise Swansea was second, to be honest with you. I knew they'd started really well. But you just imagine by the January period, those teams who start incredibly well, they start to drop off um, after December. But hats down to them, they are still going as Graham Birch takes a free kick. Yulich is back post. And Mark Yulich gets his first goal of the season. That's a little bit surprising. I thought he would have scored by now. But he's got his first goal. Assist by Ryan Gravenberch. It's a weird camera angle. I wish they'd change this for the replay. Because you can't really see it that well. But he beats the keeper at the far post. Puts us 1-0 up inside 20 minutes. And the rest of the first half is ticking away really quickly. Philippe Anderson with a free kick for West Ham in the 43rd minute. Callum Wilson on the edge now finds Edmilson Fernandez and Gravenberch gets an excellent challenge in there and Sebastian Yaros clears trying to set away Ibrahim but uh, we're a little bit out of position here so hopefully we'll manage to regain it, regain possession and attack ourselves. Sebastian Yaros picks up the ball on the right hand side from Gravenberch, he feeds Ibrahim in the box who finds Paulinho and Paulinho gets his 8th goal of the season cutting in from that left hand side, great play by us, Sebastian Yaros and Gravenberch linking up down this right hand side. Ibrahim holding the ball up on the edge of the area, waiting for the run of Paulinho and finding an absolutely perfect slip pass, beating three West Ham defenders with that pass. So absolutely fantastic stuff. 2 0. And now we have at half time West Ham 0, Brighton 2. No need for any changes. Let's G the boys up, kick off for the second half. 55 minutes in now, and there is another highlight Antonio Carlos with the goal kick. Plays it short, so we'll see if we can build up something from the back. Gravenberch finds Yaros again on this right-hand side, cutting in a queen or lovely ball for Corret on the left-hand side. He's got loads of assists this season. The ball bobbles its way to the edge of the box. Yaros is there, takes a strike on his weaker foot and cannot get it on target. With us being 2-0 up and pretty comfortable in this game, I think we will look to make some changes. I would like to get Darius Courtney on, so we're going to get uh, Ibrahim off for him. I'd like to get Tavares some game time, as not Tavares, uh, Veerman some game time as well. So we'll take Sebastian Yaros off on that right-hand side and bring the young Dutch right-winger on in his place. Another highlight now, another Gravenberg's free kick and Prieto hits a back post the same way Mark Yulich did, but he hits the bar and doesn't hit the back of the net. 12 minutes to go, also on the attack again, nothing really coming from West Ham in this game, which is absolutely fine by me. Paulinho in the box again, fades Darius Courtney, he gets his 14th goal of the season, he is absolutely banging them in from the bench and as a rotation option he is doing extremely extremely well if he still had plenty of potential to grow i would sacrifice abraham for him because he's english but the fact is he's pretty much reaching his potential now even though he's not a regular first team starter but when he's coming on he's doing the business and that is all that matters five minutes to go we will look to make our final substitute of the game and it will be Bert Jacobs coming on for Gravenberch as seems to be a ritual because Gravenberch can't uh, last 90 minutes to save his life Gidetti back post for Haksabanovic and he manages to bring one goal back for West Ham with only three minutes remaining I'm not watching the replay because I don't want to see it highlight straight from kickoff and that leaves us a little bit concerned hopefully it's a highlight for us I don't think it's going to be though as Fernandez finds Romario in the centre for West Ham. Villa cutting on the right off on the right hand side. If it gets the ball back from Romario back post, please get rid. Do not concede. Oh my that that was offside. Surely it was offside. Yes, thank God for that. And with that, I'm gonna go defensive. <laughs> Four minutes to go. Corner for us. Paulinho receives the ball, puts it in the back of the net, easy as you like, and that makes it 4-1. 
I don't think I've ever seen a team less willing to close somebody down on the edge of the box from a corner. Vehement with it. Uh, it's a decent first touch, but he's got all the time in the world. Fernandez sits off him. And uh, yeah, I think West Ham left a bit too few many men pushed up there trying to get back into this game. And they've ended up conceding one because of it. Still two minutes to go. We could still get another goal if our boys are hungry enough. Valentin on this right hand side beats the keeper. Beats the keeper. Beats his uh, marker. The ball eventually falls to Darius Courtney on the back post. He gets his second goal of the game after coming on 20 minutes ago. Well, about 30 minutes ago. Absolutely fantastic stuff by the young Englishman. Valentin does well here to beat the left back down this right hand side. And it's a great save by Andre to. Um, who is that? Is it Bert Jacobs? It's Veerman. He blocks Veerman's shot, but it falls to Courtney. A little bit unfortunately for him. And we'll go 5-1 up. That's absolutely fantastic stuff by us. The referee is free to blow the whistle at any time. And there we have it. West Ham 1, Brighton 5. We continue our absolutely superb run of form. To I think this stretches our lead at the top of the Premier League to 9 points. And there we are. We are sitting on 65. Swansea are sitting on 56. We are still unbeaten. Don't say it too loud. But we're still unbeaten. Only 13 games to go. So as we've done last season. And we're going to do the same this season. The next episode will be Porto in the Champions League. The only the first leg. And Newcastle in the League Cup final. I would really like to put the demons from last season to bed. Uh, where Spurs ended up beating us in the final. And take home some domestic trophy wear. Trophy wear? Silver wear. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.